Hi, this is Brian with Water Control Corporation. In last month's video, we talked about the basics of membrane filtration and how we use artificial pump pressure to push water backwards through a membrane from an area of high concentration of dissolved solids to an area of low concentration, basically reversing Mother Nature's processes. But what I want to focus on today are the items that are needed both before and after the actual membranes in order to have a complete functioning commercial reverse osmosis system. First, we often see a thermostatic mixing valve. Osmosis happens more quickly at higher temperatures, so we normally like to serve raw water in at a temperature of 77 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Then we usually see a reduced pressure zone assembly simply for code compliance. If RO equipment isn't already served with soft water, we will usually use a water softener to replace calcium with sodium. If the raw water is city water, it has chlorine or chloramines in it. These two chemicals will wreck the RO membrane material. For this reason, we run the raw water through beds of carbon media. The carbon absorbs the chlorine and chloramines. After another pre-filter or two, the water is ready to enter the membranes and become our permeate, our purified product water, or our concentrate, the wastewater that we normally send down the drain. After our RO membranes, we are primarily concerned with the permeate, that's the good water. If it needs a little more purifying, we might run it through some cartridge filters or tanks with a special deionization media, not much different from softening media. We use TDS or conductivity monitors to watch and maintain the purity levels. The permeate then goes into a tank. Small direct feed applications like humidification may use a hydropneumatic tank with an air bladder. Larger non-constant flow systems use atmospheric storage tanks. To deliver the water to its intended use, a stainless steel booster pump is used. Often the water is pumped through a UV lamp to kill any bacteria as well as a submicron filter capable of stopping the dead bacteria. The water then goes out to its point of use. Frequently the high purity water distribution system will include a return loop. Water recirculates 24-7 from the tank through the filters, through the loop, and back to the tank in order to maintain purity and to minimize microbiological growth. Of course it's nice when all of this equipment can be combined onto one package skid that's pre-piped and pre-wired with a single control panel with a single point electrical connection. For more information or to get started on your commercial reverse osmosis system, please contact Water Control Corporation.